But I want to ask you, where do you put your sauna in relation to this? Do you, um, do you dissociate in timing sauna from your exercise? Do you go right into the sauna after you work out? How do you incorporate that? Um, it varies. So I, um, I, I do both a, you know, a regular what's, you know, dry sauna. Actually, I don't use it as a dry sauna. I, I do a lot of steam, um, as well, but, but I do that, but I also do hot tub. So I do a jacuzzi as well. And, um, both of those, you know, forms of heat stress have been shown to increase, um, you know, heat shock proteins, which is sort of a biomarker of heat stress. And um, both of them also have been shown to increase brain-derived neurotrophic factor as well. So heat, I think, also plays a role in that, like, stress response. But um, I, it depends on the day. So um, I often will, in the sauna, I like to read scientific papers or listen to podcasts like like The Drive or, like, I'll listen to, like, if someone's on Tim Ferriss' show. Like, there's only a couple of podcasts that I ever listened to. Uh, yours is one of them. Um, so it's not like, that's like my time where I'm like, cause there's no other time. Like if I'm in the car with like my child, like most of the time I'm listening to, you know, frozen music or whatever, you know, like it's not, <laughs> I'm not listening to, to, to the drive. So, um, uh, so I, so it's like what, it depends on what I'm doing, but also we, I like to do, do hot tubs at night. So typically the sauna will be in the day. So I do my workout in the morning. I'll have the sauna warmed up and ready to go. And I'll get right into the sauna after my workout. And I either have a paper in hand or I'm going over a presentation or something. Um, I find it's really interesting. I don't know if you've ever tried this or observed it, but uh, – I've, this goes way back to my you know days as a graduate student when I first started using the sauna. I realized that like if I would go over a talk that I was going to give, like a departmental meeting or whatever, you know, I was giving mm. a talk. If I went over it and thought about like what I was going to say in the sauna, man, did I remember it better? Like mm. it was like very clear that there was something going on with my memory. Hmm. And I mean, very, very consistent. Of course, you know me, I like was diving into the literature. I'm like, there's gotta be something to explain this. And uh, you know, lo and behold, there's like a variety, like there's like certain growth factors uh, that you that you make um, that in, this, in, in the sauna with heat stress that do affect like memory. So, um, you know, plausible, plausible um, you know, hypothesis there. But anyways, so if I have something going on like a podcast or a presentation. What's your protocol? Um, what's your temperature and duration in the sauna? So typically, um, I like to, it depends on how hard I went on my, like my workout too, or if I'm doing it like right after the workout, mm -hmm. or if I'm like midday, just like, I'm going to take a break from what I'm doing at my computer and I'm going to go read a science paper in the, in the sauna. So like, it really all depends. Um, generally speaking, if I go in right after I'm, I do my Tabata session, uh, I probably stay in about 20 to 25 minutes and it'll, my temperature is like 175 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, if I am not going in right after a, uh, you know, training session, then I'll stay in longer. I'll, I'll stay in probably a little bit longer than 30 minutes. Um, sometimes I'm pretty, I'm pretty adapted to, and my temperature will be, you know, 175, 180. Sometimes I also do the, the humidity, which makes it hotter, feel hotter yeah. as well. Um, so so I guess anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes and my temperature is anywhere between 175 to 180. Um, I find that I like, I like, I used to do really, really hot and I just sort of like about like 190, like I was doing 190 and I, I it was giving me like my head, I was getting headaches more, like easier mm -hmm. and um, and so I didn't, you know, I just didn't like it and I didn't feel good. I was getting dehydrated. How, how long did you sauna during your pregnancy? How, how far uh, did you, were you able to, to, and what, what do you, what do you, I'm sure women ask you this all the time and I, I never, I don't, I don't know that I have an answer to the question. Um, I did not. So I first found out that I was uh, pregnant when I was um, touring Finland and that like everyone was like, it was like sauna, right? It was like we were going touring saunas. <laughs> yeah. You're a and sauna so VIP. Course, yeah. I was. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, what am I going to do? Um, 
So I I felt like at that early, early stage, I mean, literally, like I found out I was pregnant in Vinland. <laughs> so um, I, I did do a lot of sauna touring and stuff and, and cold, and, you know, cold plunging and all that um, at that stage. But right after when I got on the plane, come back home, sauna was out. And the reason I sort of erred on the side of caution, I mean, you can, I talked to women in Finland and I was, and they were like, oh yeah, I sauna throughout pregnancy. And like, you know, you'll, you'll find those anecdotes right. and it, you know, certainly, certainly in that culture. Um, but I, you know, there, there is a body of evidence, I'm mostly looking at like hot tub, um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's, this is common, like it's common knowledge, like pregnant women shouldn't get in the hot tub, right? I mean, like, the, like you go to any spa, like it's like, um, yeah. known, but, um, there's, a, there's a body of evidence that it can, you know, something might increase the risk of like, sort of like a fetal alcohol syndrome, oh, um, wow. sort of thing in, in offspring uh, where it's like, or even neural tube defects. Mm. So I was concerned that going in the sauna, um, perhaps could increase the risk of something like that. And so I decided that it just wasn't worth it. And, and so I did not sauna at all, like throughout pregnancy. And I even waited a little bit like while um, breastfeeding and stuff. Like I, I waited probably like um, six months or so before I really got back into sauning. Now, all the while I was exercising throughout pregnancy and so many benefits to that. But um, kind of back to your question, the other protocol I do is at night. And it's interesting because doing the hot tub at night, I'm like, we're in we're in that hot tub. And it's kind of also the time that my husband and I get together away from our child, right? I mean, it's like our time. Yeah. We're like out the stars, you know, you know, like dark sky, like it's nice. And um that is something that like my husband likes to do it like literally like he wants to do it every night because it helps his his sleep so tremendously. Um, I don't have as much of an issue with like my latency or my sleep like in general, um, but he does like he falls asleep, like my natural bed like I'm asleep by 930 and it's like no like I can fall asleep within like you know I'm, I'm asleep in 10 minutes like I get in the bed and like I can be asleep in 10 minutes. Like, he is not that way. Uh, and so the doing doing the hot tub um, and he likes the hot tub. Um, that really helps his sleep. So so I end up doing that a lot as well. And sometimes I'll do like both. I'll do the sauna and hot tub in the same day. Um, it just, it all depends. 